As the stock market continues to drop, 401ks continue to take a beating, and banks continue to offer measly returns in the form of CDs, bonds, and savings. More and more people are turning to a little-known company out of Virginia that is helping average people receive above-average returns that are completely backed and secured. King and King Associates have been involved in real estate for nearly two decades and have helped thousands earn steady returns monthly, annually, or quarterly. If you know anyone interested in growing their investments, contact Jay at King & King for a 15-minute, no-obligation consultation. Do it today, as return on investment meetings are happening daily. That's Jay at KingAndKingVA.com or 800-492-6487. Make your money work for you. Hello, family. How are you this day? Listen, praise him yet again as it is another day that the Lord has made. Amen, amen. Listen, I am thankful to once again uh, be coming through your smartphones and your televisions and your mobile platforms and your social feeds. As I get ready to share another word, I would once again like to remind you guys that if God has put it on your heart, Please feel free to donate to the House of Faith, which is the ministry I represent. Uh, we're working on building up a lovely donation that we can pass along to my brother Kashif, who continues to fight the good fight in Pakistan. And we support our brothers, amen, from this nation to the next, amen. I also wanted to give you guys uh, just some heads up on some of the things that we've been working on, amen. Uh, behind the scenes, you know, we've been added to the Now Network, praise God, you know, another family member in Christ allowing me to share the gospel with you. Uh, so thank you to the Now Network, amen. Shout outs to Kingdom Purpose TV and the Gospel Network, in addition to those that, you know, we're still working with in the background, amen. Now listen, listen. When I first started this situation, many, 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 many moons ago, you know, I just wanted to leave my community a better place than when I arrived. And, uh, you know, one of the sole things about, you know, the House of Faith ministry was that we wanted to make this impact, make this impact on the community. Amen. And we're still committed to it. Right. Uh, but to see and experience God moving us into another area uh, where now we share the gospel with folks that are overseas, serving in our military, folks that are in prisons. Anybody that wants to hear a word now has it available to them, amen. And uh, and I mean, even just on demand, I mean, even on our social uh, platforms, I mean, it's just a crazy ride uh, to see how God grows us and uh, in which way he continues to grow us, amen. Which is why we must remain faithful to him and what he wants to do with us and how he utilizes us, amen. Continue to keep us in your prayers as we just keep going on this crazy ride with the ministry, amen. Um, I'm excited to uh, to share about the app, you know, that we have coming. We're working on this app. It's wild, right? It's going to be such a blessing um, that years and years of just collecting material and different things can be shared with you guys. I mean, if you missed and if you've kind of noticed, you know, we've been slowing down on our YouTube channel a bit and our podcast. It's always something, right? And uh, we, we don't really broadcast too much from that anymore. Where do you think it's going? I mean, it's going to the app. All these crazy things will be added to the app uh, so that we can continue to share and connect with you guys on a much deeper level. And so I'm looking forward to that. Amen. And uh, yes, family, we've got all types of cool stuff going on. 
readily accessible to you. Uh, it's been a summer and it has been flying by, but we continue uh, to put in the work, amen, where we can. Uh, our small groups are trying to stand up here on the Mondays at the house, and I'm just very excited for what the Lord will continue to do uh, amongst our works, amen. And I thank you all for your faithfulness as we continue to fight this fight and go forth into the nations, baptizing in the name, amen. We are taking the gospel and the works as far as we can. And so it's just such an exciting time. Um, now, I want to read our scripture today. It's kind of long, so bear with me. Uh, but there are, uh, and there are a lot of different names here that I will read and, uh, and try to get through. Now, mind you, I've gone through and I've like, you know, studied each one of these names, but there's still a lot of them. So it's kind of, you know, it's like, yeah, I did remember how to say that name, but I may not remember now. So follow along with me as I take you on a, a journey and we go through Nehemiah chapter three, amen. That's Nehemiah chapter three. Let's do it. <clears throat> Elijah Bibb, the high priest and his fellow priest went to work and rebuilt the sheep gate. They dedicated it and set its doors in place, building as far as the tower of a hundred, which they dedicated as far as the tile of Hanano. And the men of Jericho built the adjoining section, so Jacor, son of Amar, built next to them. The fish gate was rebuilt by the sons of Hansaniah. They laid its beams and put its doors and bolts in place. And Moramoth, the son of Uriah, the son of Hatkuz, repaired the next session. Next to him, Meshluyam, son of Berechiah, and the son of Meshzebel, made repairs. And next to him, Zadok, the son of Bana, also made repairs. The next section was repaired by the men of Tokoa. But their nobles would not put their shoulders to the work under their supervisors. And Jesaniah gate was repaired by jo Joy Ada, son of Pesia, and Meshleham, son of Besidia, Besidia. They laid the beams and put its doors with their bolts and bars in place. Next to them, repairs were made by men of Gibbon and Zizpath. Meleth, Melatiah <laughs> of Gibeon and Jadon of Maranoth, places under the authority of the government of the Trans Euphrates. Uzel, son of Haraha, one of the goldsmiths, repaired the next section, and Hananiah, one of the perfume makers, made repairs next to that. They restored Jerusalem as far as the board wall. <clears throat> Repha, Son of Hur, ruler of the half district of Jerusalem, repaired the next section. Adjoining this, Judea, son of Hermuth, Hermuth, made repairs opposite his house, and Hatsush, son of Hashibani, made repairs next to him. Malkijay, son of Harim, and Hashub, son of Pah, Pahath. Moab repaired another section and the towers of the ovens. Shalom, son of Halashish, Halahish, ruler of the half district of Jerusalem, repaired the next section with the help of his daughters. Hmm. The valley gate was repaired by Hanan and the residents of Zanoa. They built, rebuilt it and put its doors with the bolts and bars in place. They also repaired a thousand cubits of the wall as far as the dung gate. The dung gate was repaired by Melike, son of Rebekab, Rekabab, Rekab, ruler of the district of Beth, Hekarim. He, he rebuilt it and put its doors and their bolts and their bars in place. Mm. The fountain gate was repaired by Shal Shalom, son of Kol Hosea, ruler of the district of Mizpah. He rebuilt it, roofing it, and putting it over its doors and bolts and bars in place. He also repaired the wall of the pool of Siloam by the king's garden as far as the steps going down from the city of David. 
Beyond him, Nehemiah, son of Azubuk, ruler of the half district of the Beth Zer, made repairs up to the opposite, sorry, made repairs up to the a point opposite of the tombs of David as far as the artificial pool and the house of heroes. Now, next to him, the repairs were made by the Levites under Rehum, son of Benai. Beside him, Hashbiah, ruler of the half district of Kilai, uh, carried out repairs for his district. Next to him, the repairs were made by their fellow Levites under Benui, son of Hinnadad, ruler of the half district of Kilai. Next to him, Ezer, son of Joshua, ruler of Mizpah, repaired another section from the point facing the accent uh, to the armory as far as the angle of the wall. Next to him, uh, Bar Baruch, son of Zabai, zealously repaired from another section from the angle to the entrance of the house of Elishabib, the high priest. Next to him, <laughs> Merimoth, son of Uriah, son of Hakus, repaired another section from the entrance of, of Elishabib's house to the end of it. The repairs next to him were made by the priests from the surrounding region. Beyond them, Benjamin and Hashub made repairs to the front of their house next to them. Azariah, son of Messiah, the, uh, the son of Aniah, made repairs beside his house. Next to him, Benui, son of Hinadad, repaired another section of Azariah's house to the angle of the corner. Palal, son of Uzai, worked the opposite angle and the tower projecting from the upper palace near the court of the guard. Next to him, Padiah, son of Perush, and the temple servants living on the hill of Ophel made repairs up to a point opposite the water gate toward the east and the projecting tower. Next to them, the men of Tekoa repaired another section from the great projecting tower to the wall of Ophel. Above the horse gate, the priests made repairs, each in front of his own house. Next to them, Zaduk, son of Emir, made repairs opposite to his house. Next to him, Shemaiah, son of Shekinah, the guard of the east gate, made repairs. Next to him, Hananiah, son of Shel Shelemiah, and Hanun, the sixth son of Zalf Zalaf, repaired another section. Next to them, Meshalem, son of Berechiah, made repairs opposite of his living quarters. Next to him, Malchaish, uh, one of the goldsmith made repairs as far as the house as of the temple as of the temple servants and the merchants opposite of the inspection gate and as far as the room above the corner and between the room above the corner and the sheep gate and the goldsmith and the merchants made repairs. Mm. I know that was a lot, y'all. Thank you for hanging in there with me. Let's go into prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word today, Lord. We thank you for what you continue to do with us and through us, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Our hearts are ready. Our minds are ready. Continue to pour upon us, Lord, your will and pour upon us the strategy that we may execute and carry out with all the perfection that you would have us to do. We give you the praise this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. That's how we get down, all right? Listen. We are back in the mix, family, discussing restoration, right? And this has been a journey that has lasted us pretty much through the entire year. And I believe that there is a strong chance that I will likely finish the year out on this series because I know somebody hearing my voice today has lost, right? Then you're lost and you have not recovered in an area in which you trusted. You believed, amen. You ain't got to tell me. Listen, I was watching the prophets on YouTube last year talking about this year of vision, 2020. God's going to make it so clear. Oh, this is the year in which you must have your vision boards done, right? And take a chance at getting things going. And, and, and I look back and I'm like, yeah, God was saying some things all right in the year of 2020 where he just shut it all down, right? No one saw it coming, amen. 
I, I saw that God was saying some things and nobody, unfortunately, was prepared for what he was saying. Amen. And so this year, amen, this is the year where we begin to rebuild. Praise God. We can begin to put things back into their proper place and we can even put things into a better place than where they were before. Amen. And so what I've been doing is just that so far as going through our book of Nehemiah. Amen. So we've made it to chapter three <clears throat> and I got to give a really super quick recap. Amen. Uh, so last week we saw that Nehemiah had received the green light to repair the walls of his people in Jerusalem. And so he heads out and sure he takes a few kingsmen with them, but he inspects the walls by himself. He inspects the damage in the middle of the night while everybody else is sleeping. Nehemiah is working with the burden that's inside of him. He doesn't tell anybody why he's there, but he's touched ground zero and he's making an assessment. Amen. So last week we talked about the importance of having a look, right? I want to take it a little bit further and just say, see things as they are. Amen. I, I've seen pastors in leadership, right? They get what they believe is a word and a command. God told me to start this program and, and, and they get to work on it only to discover that the program that they've been working on already exists. And it isn't even a bona fide need in the community, but there's another area that's more uh, in need uh, that hasn't been answered yet. And so see, it could have been avoided if we only went to ground zero and visited the very areas that God had said sent you before we made the announcements, before we started printing the flyers, before we started going forward off the top, right? See, this is what it's really, this is really what it is, amen. We want to see things for what they really are. See things for what they really are, amen. Uh, open the mail that has continued to pile on your table and look at those bills, amen. We can't get to a place of building credit if you refuse to acknowledge what you truly owe, amen. Assess the relationships around you. See them for what they really are. Amen. Now, I know I know this is a tricky part because everybody says we have our own perspective. However, our Bible teaches us that there is one truth and it is that truth that will set us free. Amen. So he goes down there and he confirms that these gates are jacked up. These walls are broken. Right. And the burden that God has been giving on him uh, is now bubbling inside. See, God will give you something big on the inside of you that you must do on the outside, amen. But if it is from God, I guarantee it won't be something that you can do by yourself in a vacuum, amen. And I say that because every time God has done something big, he has utilized other people to do it, amen. And therefore, what he puts in you is necessary for the outpouring of others. It is for others. It is for others. It is for a larger purpose, amen. So now we get into the people thing, right? This is where, again, we need each other. You need people. If you really suck at the people thing, you really got to put on some work, man, because we need people, amen. You need each other. Nehemiah is able to communicate. Matter of fact, last week he says, the Lord is upon me. He is letting people know, I ain't come here for myself. I came here to do the work of the Lord. Amen. When we speak to people, how about this? When leadership speaks to people, do they speak from their own place of power and influence? Do you try to get something accomplished because people like you and maybe y'all are friends or maybe you're trying to do it just because your title is this or your title is that? Or are you speaking with the authority of a God that has sent you and commissioned you to get this work done? Amen. And so Nehemiah speaks to the people and he says, we're going to rebuild this wall. And this is where we are now. Amen. And I've just read an entire chapter, an entire chapter, raffling off names of families that got in and went to work on a wall. We should all look at those names and think it takes a community. It takes a community. If someone reached out to you right now, if you knew in the back of your mind that all these people's names are going to be in the Bible that put in the work, do you think more people might have showed up to help Nehemiah? Oh, I want to get my name in the Bible. I, I want to get my name. I want to make sure I'm accounted for. Do you think more people would have helped David? Yes. Yes. So the first thing uh, that I want to point out is that the people went to build the walls 
But the people that had them under the thumb, right, the captives, their leadership didn't, right? The people went and did it. Uh, now, you remember last week that we talked about how people may be disturbed, disturbed to hear about the moving and the shaking and the changing on things. Oh, leadership figured we got these people under our thumbs forever and now they're looking to rebuild. But these are people. Don't you know there are people who will want you under the thumb forever? Let's get a bit more in depth. Amen. I'm going to cover this in the next chapter. But there are forces. Amen. Forces that want to keep you down as long as possible. And those forces can very much manifest in various people's lives around you. And then it motivates them to come up and speak out on you because it causes trouble to you. It becomes divisive to you. It becomes a problem for you. And all you're trying to do is repair what was lost. All you're trying to do is gain back something that was taken from you. And yet there seems to be forces that come up against you. Amen. And yet each family that is that is that is read, that we read just a couple minutes, each family goes and they get right to work. Now think about this. There is no real leadership assistant because they're in opposition, and yet they sit in the face of said opposition. Each person, each family can raise up and find a task, find a function, find an area that God has called them to, that God has caused them to contribute to, and they go to work. They go to work, they go to work, they go to work, they go to work. Isn't it amazing? Because I see many believers out there, many brothers and sisters, and I'm simply asking that as these people recognize areas in their life that God has called them to work, have you indeed recognize the areas in ministry that God has called you to go to work in? Amen. Because I read a statistic to the House of Faith a few years back worldwide that churches of any size, it was estimated that only 20% of the overall church was actually doing the ministry work. 20% didn't matter how many numbers, big numbers, small numbers, take 20% times that, times that number, and that number that comes out, that's the number of the people actually doing the work to make the ministry work. Isn't that sad? 80%. What are they there for then? 80%. Are they there to be entertained? Are they there just to sit in the pews and watch the 20% try to keep things afloat? And some wondering why I'm not rushing to open the doors. <laughs> now, let's begin to assess what God has put inside of you. Amen. So that when the cavalry comes, we clearly have our tools and we can clearly get into building the wall. Amen. Now, I want to point something else out. Each of these families are working on a portion, right? They're not skilled wall builders. This is not buying homes, amen. <laughs> These are people who have been in exile and they now have an opportunity to rebuild, amen. Do you think they all uh, got the same tools at their disposal? Do you think the wall is going to come out looking exactly all the same? It's going to come out looking to perfection? Because I would argue probably not. And yet God still used them. God still signed off on the job. Amen. For those that sit back and think you are not an expert, amen, and you have gone too far. Listen, for those that think everything must be perfect or nothing at all, I simply ask that we abandon the tradition of the perfection of task and look to the perfection of our heart, amen, because God still used them, amen. A key piece and restoration is understanding that there is no perfect time like the present to get going, amen. Everybody's working on the same thing. And yet somehow it's going to end up looking different depending on which side you go to. You go over there to one person's side, his side might look a little bit different than the other person's side. But we all working on the same thing. We all are dedicated to the same cause, but it might look just a little bit different. Does that mean that I get a chance to go there and start trouble with that other wall? Because that wall doesn't look as perfect in my mind as I think it should be. No, no, no. We're all working on the same thing, amen. It just might come out looking a little bit different, and yet God still uses it. God still signs off on it. God still solidifies the walls, amen. Praise God. Now, um, God still uses people. Amen. And, and yourself, you yourself, 
may not be able to find the perfect people that you're looking for. Amen. And so perhaps that has even hampered you in your own business, amen, or even in what you're trying to do. You can't find the perfect people, so you're getting frustrated, but but use what you got available to get yourself to the next level, amen. I'm going to share a quick story that hit me today because I know we're coming up on it, and uh, I want you just to get some things out of this today, amen. Quick story. For those that don't know, amen, particularly in the Fredericksburg area, you know, stores have been hit so hard by this pandemic, and just for them trying to stay a ahead of, uh, you know, above water. I've been giving them my business, right? I've been trying to do what I could do, right? And so I've been trying, man. I've been trying this new coffee shop, right? I've been trying to give them an opportunity. For those who know, oh, I need my coffee, but I've been trying to give them an opportunity. So uh, they say, uh, today they're going to be open and I go there and they're closed. And the next time I go, they're closed. And the next time I go, they're closed, right? So this morning, this morning, right? Right before I put this together, I get up and I'm like, hey, they got to be open today, right? I go there and guess what? They're closed, right? And so there's signs all over the windows that say, we're hiring, we're hiring all signs outside the window. But then I go down the block and there's another coffee shop and it's open. And it also has all these, we're hiring signs, we're hiring signs. But you know, there's also a sign in the window that says, please be patient with us while we work through our staffing shortage. Family, I want to ask, which restaurant do you think, uh, which coffee shop do you think got my business? Which store do you think will make it out of this tough time? Because family, if you're willing to get going, I promise that God will provide you what you need in the face of opposition, amen. But the walls will stay broken for as long as you like until somebody, somebody like you says it's time for restoration. Amen. Amen. Listen, I'm up on it, family. I appreciate your time together today. We're going to get into some really good stuff in chapter four, amen, where we get to look at how a community comes together, how you come together in the face of opposition. We're going to have some great discussion on that, but I'm going to pray us out, amen. Father God, we thank you for our, uh, for our time together today, Lord. We thank you for your word, how it has come into our lives. We want to look at it, Lord. We want to meditate upon the points made out of the Nehemiah in the third chapter. We ask, Lord, that we be prepared, that we be ready, Lord, that we get out there and we start putting in work on the wall. And let's not be afraid to make use of what's around us. There is no perfect time. There is only time. And we want to make use of it, Lord. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So listen, uh, feel free to hit me up ministerjking at gmail.com. Uh, feel free to add us on the Facebook, House of Faith Fred VA. Uh, and until the next time I get back together with you guys, listen, stay blessed, stay focused, and have a productive week. And I look forward to being back with you yet again.